Salut tout le monde, which means salut everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about a distribution made by the Frenchies. Yes, the Frenchies, papa. Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. And I know the intro was pretty funny, me showing off the fact that I'm French by talking French, but also like showing off my old uh, jersey, football jersey, because yes, uh, I still use the word football instead of soccer, even if I'm uh, living in North America. But the idea is that this distro is, I would say, like the result of a long, long story related to Linux and especially like Linux in France. So let me explain. Uh, a long time ago, I, I, I exactly, I don't have the... Uh, a specific uh, date date toward it, but I think it was more like in the in the late 1990s. Uh, for the oldest who are like watching this video, uh, this company uh, called Mandrake released uh, their first uh, operating system based on Linux, and I'm pretty sure some of you like used it. I had the opportunity to to try it when I was younger. This Linux distribution. It was really oriented toward the use of access. And, and at the time, Mandrake was one, if not like the most accessible uh, Linux distro out there. And at this point, and at this point, you are certainly asking, like, what are we talking about Mandrake and, and not like Mageia? Because this video is supposed to be uh, about Mageia. Well, because of copyright issue, Mandrake has to change its name. Uh, to something else. And because they were also acquiring another company at the time uh, called Connectiva, which was another like Brazilian based company, which was also like uh, producing a Linux distribution, uh, they decided to merge the name between like Mandrake and Connectiva and it became Mandriva. So this was a later, like uh, I would say, evolution from the Mandrake company. So you certainly have heard about Mandrake or Mandriva before, uh, because they, they released a lot, lot of distro. And what happened after that, uh, the company, I think, like stopped, but certain of the actual pillar of the company decided to continue the adventure of the distro itself, and they created Mageia. So this is kind of like the whole story. I really invite you to go check uh, their website and also like Wikipedia, different source who might be able to explain it a little bit better. And I would say like a little bit more in depth. But what we have right now is Mageia. And this is a result of those like uh, 25 years, 26 years of evolution of Linux from their side. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that this distro is a stable distro. It uses like a stable, like a release cycle. And I would say it's around like 24 months, 30 months overall. And really like the emphasis stayed the same since the beginning of their story, which is being really easy in terms of access. And we'll see in the video, I do believe it's a success on their end. Like they still kept their, I would say like philosophy as their vision. Now to get a little bit deeper in what it is, it's their own distro, but you have to understand at the time when the distro started, it was a fork of Red Hat. And because it was also a distro which was oriented towards the corporate world at the beginning, it still kept, I would say, this um, nature. So when you're going to be installing the distro, you will really understand quickly that they provide uh, easy, I would say, of access, but they keep all the corporate, I would say, like tool and like, I would say, like vision and a way of aborting uh, the distro when you use it and even when you install it. So it's, it's really square. Just, just keep it that way. So as always, I'm going to put a link in the description below of the full installation and review of uh, the, the, the distro itself. What I want to say is like, I was kind of like surprised by it. I really try to adapt during the stream of all those, you know, like new coming thing. And I, I have to be honest with you, I don't think I did a good job because I kind of like use it a little bit after. 
and try to, to get really more into it. And I think I grasp what the distro was really about after the stream. And that's why, like, sometimes, even if you watch the stream, it's interesting to continue and, and watch the video about the distro because, you know, sometimes, like, four hours, five hours of streaming and heavy testing is not really enough to get the distro itself. So I'm going to let you, like, watch it if you want through the link. Like, that's going to have a better understanding of all the different, like, features and stuff. But in this video, I'm going to be going more at a high level for you to, to, to get a better understanding of what the distro is, in my opinion, really about. So let's start, as always, uh, with the positive. So the first point I want to mention related to this distro is the fact that when you install it, because it's a distro on its own, even if 20 years ago it was based on Red Hat, uh, you will have a new experience as a user. And I know some of you like to distro up. Arriving on a distro which provide something new, a new vision, is really enticing. And I think that they do a super good job toward that. So how to explain it like in, in a really like easy way? You can do all the configuration through GUI. This is, I think, one of the key points of this distro is the accessibility. You can do everything. And this is fun. If you are the type of user who doesn't want to touch the terminal and want a stable release type of distro, which is almost like corporate, in my opinion, which is like really square everywhere, you are missing out if you are not using this distro. Th that will be the first point. The second point is related to the community itself. So the community itself, if you are French, is going to be a big plus. Because as I mentioned, it's, it's a French distro. But I think uh, they kind of miss, and, and I'm going to mention that later, they kind of miss this international aura related uh, to just speaking English. And I don't think it's related to the language itself. It's more about the fact that most of the users are French. And maybe if you are not French, it might be a little bit harder to get into the world of Magia. Most, I would say, of the documentation are both in English and French. But I noticed, me being French, is that some of the key uh, documentation when it comes to like community are more French than English. I know most of you guys who are watching are not French. But if you are French or you are even like bilingual, you can speak both of the language and you like this type of distro, I would really encourage you like to go there, test it, see what you think and maybe like help them to build uh, some type of wiki or documentation. Like in, it's pretty solid in English, don't get me wrong, but I can tell like the community is more thriving in French. Maybe what they need is just a little push from, uh, you know, YouTuber like me. Hello. <laughs> and uh, I really hope I'm going to give them uh, what they deserve here. And it's, 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 re it's really good. Okay, like I'm going to jump in, like a little spoiler alert. Like, it's good. A point I already mentioned is the fact that it's really corporate. So when I think about corporate, you see, when you install a, a, a distro like OpenSUSE, when you install a distro like Rocky Linux, when you install a distro like Magea, this is, this is where you're going to be at. You're going to be in this realm where everything is polished in a way which make it ready to, um, I would say, like work. That's a feeling I had when I installed the distro. It doesn't mean that it does not look good. So this is the next point. Uh, in terms of like graphical aspect, they made some work on KDE, which is just awesome. So you can install every type of desktop environment, but the main ISO, or at least the one I used, was on KDE. And they have their own vision of KDE, and I really like invite you to, to watch it or just try it. I think it was really nice, right? And again, corporate in a way where it was nice, but not too much, you know, like just where it needs to be. And I, I really like like all the details they put there, like the icon, like the, the choice of color. The, it's, it's really nice. I have to say, uh, it, it kind of has like this French touch, okay? So maybe I'm biased because I'm French, but I really felt like home there. Now another point, and I want to go deeper there. If you start to use the terminal, because I, I, I use the GUI and everything related to it, and you will see in, in the full live video, like you can do literally everything through the GUI. I want you to go further and start to use 
uh, the terminal. And the first thing you're going to have to use, obviously, is the package manager. And they have their own package manager, even if they keep the uh, full compatibility with the RPM packages. So this is really important. Uh, their package manager is called uh, URPMI, I think. I think this is the right name. I'm always scared about the pronunciation. But they have their own package manager. It works pretty well, pretty fast. And they are compatible with the RPM package. So this is a big value added because you're going to have all the RPM package, for example, Fedora, all the ones which are like already prepared to, to work on the, with a more mainline distro, which is going to be working there. Example, you want fast fetch, you URPMI install uh, the RPM package downloaded from GitHub, and you are good to go. Now, when it comes to the choice of packages, again, I think their own library on their repo is not as big, for example, as uh, Arch. Okay, like you have to be clear, but it's still big enough for you to do whatever you want. Again, a good point there. The last positive point I want to mention here is the fact that this distro is, by definition, ready for content creation. It's corporate, it's solid. I'm, I'm going to mention that after, like the package, because it's stable, they're going to be a little bit older. But because they have also like flat pack pre-installed, and I've, I'm going to have to talk about that too, you are not going to be in a position where you can't install DaVinci Resolve out of the box. It's going to work perfectly, no tweak, nothing. You download DaVinci Resolve, you install it, you're good to go. I said it was the last point, but it might not be the last point. The last point is this one. The installation was super good. It had one problem, we're going to talk in the negative after, but the installation itself was really nice, especially like for NVIDIA user like me. Some type of distro are kind of like gatekeeping me because I have an NVIDIA uh, card. But here, no gatekeeping, the NVIDIA driver were installed. It was not the latest, latest, but they were installed. Everything was working out of the box. Some little issue I will mention after, but it was working. So this, again, good job, guys. Now let's talk about the negative. When it comes to the negative, you know, I'm French. I could be biased and say there is no negative, but you know me. I'm going to have to point them out as they are and how... You know, even if he hurt me because it's it's good, you know, when when you you are a little bit like patriotic to show off uh, like what uh, people from your place can actually do. But I have to say it, I had a big issue related to the installation. On my machine, I have three hard drive: one with Windows, one with Arch, uh, Cache OS, and the other one is the one I make all my tests on. And I decided to install Mageia on, on this third, I would say like SSD that I use specifically for doing all my review. During the install, the installer asked me where I wanted to put the bootloader. And I specified to install it on the same disk that I will install the distro. But it did not do it. So this is, 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 is an issue and a non-issue. I'm going to tell you why. If you don't have any update on the other side, of the bootloader, no problem, right? It's installed there, no issue. Now, if you erase the other disk, if you have an update that kind of like destroy the EFI partition of the overdrive, you won't be able to get easily back on your Mageia install. And this is a problem. So I really hope they're going to fix it. Because that's the type of problem like I, I kind of hate. I want, I want to lie to you, like this is a big issue, especially for the new user, because they are accessible. Like they did all the heavy lifting to be accessible and have everything ready to go for GUI. And then you have this experience, which could break the, the distro like in one second. And it, it just sucks. So that's an issue you're going to have to take in consideration. Obviously, if you have only one hard drive, on your PC, it won't be a problem. But if you have multiple hard drives, think about what I said. This is an issue for sure. The second point I want to talk about here is, is the fact that most of the packages are old. And because, you know, I always come with the perspective of content creation and gaming, some of the packages are really old because it's a stable distro. So they won't make major upgrade of the packages. And this could be an issue for you. I'm thinking about OBS, 
OBS is was pretty old in this release. Uh, I'm I'm thinking about um, all, all the other like type of software you might use in a content creation like type of like workflow. You're gonna have old version of those packages. Now, what would be the best way to avoid that? Flat pack. So here, flat pack. That I would be the third point, negative point. It's not a big negative, but it's still negative. It comes with flat pack installed out of the box, which is awesome. Okay, like the fact they already think about installing Flatpak is great. The issue, I don't know why, it's not configured. Why is it not configured with Flathub? So I'm not a pro of Flatpak. Maybe you guys know the answer. It wouldn't cost them too much to just have it ready, ready to go, already configured for people not to have to open the terminal and set it up with Flathub. It's just my two cents there. It's not a big negative, but I would say like, if you are already that accessible, just do the little step to be like 100% accessible. And then we, we need to talk about gaming because I did all the tests for gaming and this is what happened. If I use the Steam from their repo, Cyberpunk wouldn't even launch. And I think it was related to some type of dependency issue. The performance overall in gaming was solid. I still put it in negative because there is better out there. And again, this distro is not a gamer distro. Okay, Let, let's say it straight. It's a stable distro. We are not in a realm of like gaming for gamers optimized distro. However, I have to say it, game with the, the base Steam RPM, some of them, they were not launching. So what I've done, I switched to the flat pack version. And guess what? Then they were launching. In terms of performance, uh, the numbers, they were good. Like if, if I have to compare it, for example, to non-gaming distro, they were above. So I'm thinking about Ubuntu or Fedora. This distro out of the box will give you more performance. Now, does it give you the type of performance you would get to a fully arch-based distro totally optimized? No. Same against Nobara, same against like Cache OS. It will be a little bit under. You will let FPS on the side. But again, this is not the same type of distro, right? Like this is not, their end game is not the same. So how do we conclude with this one? Well, with this one, I'm, I'm going to be straight with you guys. If you like stable, if you want to have an experience a little bit different from what you are used to with, you know, uh, Debian, maybe Rocky Linux, or any type of like stable distro that you are used to and you want to you wanna try something new, Magia might be for you. If you are totally upset when you have to go through the terminal and you want this type of like corporate stability and this type of like accessibility for GUI, you are in the right place. I didn't even know about this distro because of all the name change. And to me, it kind of like went out of my head. When someone came and was like, hey, you need to try Magia. And when the community like start to, you know, give me the link between like Mandrake, Mandriva, and then Magia, everything clicked. I was like, okay, this is what it is. I, I believe, and this is totally subjective what I'm going to share with you guys. I, I believe this distro uh, is missing a little bit of marketing there. I think uh, they, they, if they had a little bit more visibility out there, if they had maybe um, some of those little like detail, which I believe like negative point, a little bit ironed out, they could be a, a really, really good distro. And I'm saying they could, they, they already are. But it, I think there is just something missing there for them to go to a point where it could be recognized as much as the other distro I mentioned before. Because they have this little, like, something that really is enticing. And I think also, like, the lack of visibility overall is an issue. Uh, when I share my thought about the distro with some of my buddies who knew the distro for so long, it looked like most of the users were still using it are users who were using Mandrake and Mandriva before. So if you are one of them and 
you didn't really make the link between Magia and your old good memories about Mandrake and, and Mandriva. Man, like, j just give it a shot. It's not perfect. It needs a little bit of work. But you won't be disappointed. This is a solid, stable distro. When it comes to gaming, I, I have to say it as it is. There is better over option out there. Definitely. Now, when you go into the stable realm, non-gaming distro, it did a pretty good job there. And I also have to say it. It's, it's a solid option. And when it comes to content creation, you won't be disappointed. This distro has all the tools to make you happy for a, a solid content creation workflow. So this is, is actually pretty nice. So yeah, that's all I have to say about this distro. Guys, thank you very much again for your support. Don't forget the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to put the little notification there. Uh, if you want to help the channel, please share uh, the video you liked. Please uh, make a little comment, dance there, whatever you want. We need to hack this algorithm. For all the users who are supporting me, nas uh, not nationally, but financially. Yeah, I'm losing my English here. Thank you very much. You are the best. Whether it's through uh, YouTube membership or the Patreon or direct donation. Guys, thank you very much. You have no idea how much it helps. Uh, we're going to see you uh, in the next one. Take care of yourself. And as always, bisous bisous. See you guys, take care.